Hey everyone, it is Sunday the 26th of April and it's uh, about five past two yep, five past two in the afternoon it's a lovely sunny day and we're on lockdown so we can't really go out and enjoy it which really sucks <laughs> it really does you know, a day like this would have been perfect for car boot sales and whatnot but we can't have them <laughs> we can't, you know, and even if they were holding them we can't go to them so Never mind, it is what it is. And I can't remember what YouTuber I got that saying from. Oh yeah, I can. Right, anyway. Um, I've obtained a free racing bike, which is downstairs. And I want to bring it up here because I want to free up the um, back wheel. You'll see why. <laughs> uh, um... But I'll talk more about that when I've got that up here and I'm ready to do that part of the video. Um, so, I'm going to clean up in here in a minute. So I'm going to take about 10 minutes because I just need all of this cleared, basically. And eventually, maybe later today, I might clear this bench off so I can bring my uh, model railway down and perhaps have a tinker with that during the week because I've got the parts I need to start on the points motors and I've got a couple of um, PC power supplies I could use to power them I hope <laughs> um, so yeah I can do that during the week and my hay fever at the minute is driving me up the wall this eye is quite sore in the corner I'm getting constant grit and muck in my eyes I keep getting a tickly cough every now and again and I've got the sniff. <laughs> right. There's a few more things before I shut the camera off. You saw my lampy lamps video. So here they are in daylight. All, well, I was going to say all of my Tildorns, but it's not actually. It's all the ones that, well, my favourite of the Tildorns that I've got. Um, and believe it or not, Apart from the three amber ones, I bought all of these from the same person. <laughs> um, he's also a collector. <clears throat> and uh, he helped me out quite a lot. He's the same person I got all these light bars from. That's another project I want to get started as well. Get these wired up. I'll get the ones wired up that I want wired up at least. Um, and yes. He did give me that tail light cluster. We'll have a look at that as well in another video. See what that's like. It's the left side tail light cluster for a trailer. I think I worked it out as a seven function. One, two, three, four, five function, sorry. Yeah. Fog light, tail light, brake light, turn signal, reverse light. Yeah. <laughs> So, maybe today if I feel up to it, I've got uh, some JSP lamps that I want to hang up here. Uh, another doorman there to hang there. Then this wall will be all doorman lamps, apart from the big stop sign in the middle, which is actually JSP. Um, but I don't really want to move that, so I could. I could move it and put it right there. But then I won't have anywhere to put these ones. So, it can stay where it is. Right kitchen. I'm in the middle of restoring another car but the paintwork here is not working in my favour. Now I've got a decision to make because I can actually see where I've patched it there because it wasn't coming out quite right. Do I try another coat of paint if I can squeeze another coat of paint out of my gold can there and a bit of lacquer just to see how it comes up because pretty much that is the only area that is bugging me on this car. The door was also a problem on this side that's the uh, left side door but I've redone that and it's come up quite nice this time so I'm happy with that but if I can't get this to look any better then the chances are I'm gonna have to put this through the paint stripper and uh, in fact I can see another imperfection right there so I think that's gonna be my best course of action is that an imperfection or is that a mold line it could be a mold line actually Hmm. 
bit of an imperfection right there as well. A few too many imperfections I think. I might have to take my uh, little sanding wheel to it as well as the wire wheel. That's what I did to that door to get it to come up much much better. I've got some more gold paint up mum so next time I'm down there I can pick that up. Yeah, I think I will actually uh, strip that back and start again. Because I've actually done quite a lot of work to detail the front bit. It's all one plastic piece and I've gone over it with a nice silver paint pen. And I've done all the wheels and I've even done the rear bumper. So it matches the front. No, it seems ridiculous. I've gone through all that work to make it look nice. Cleaned up all the interior and I've got all these little imperfections all over it. So that will go through the stripper. Which I've got over here in a glass Branson pickle jar. Do not get that crap on your skin. In fact, when I first used it, I was using these gloves, these little disposable ones, and it actually ate through the finger. A couple of fingers on one of the gloves. So I had to pull these out of the cup. I'm glad I've got these under the under my uh, kitchen sink. So yeah, always wear gloves. And have on that stuff. That is some real potent stuff. My stepdad bought a five litre bottle of it uh, to strip the paint off of the mini when we get to that point. He said I could uh, pinch a jar full of it. It's quite a gel like substance. Come here, though. He wants his food. I've got his food covered up at the minute because of the blast of flies. So I'm going to uncover it for him. And he can come in here and help himself. A little bath for the plastics. So I think that's going to be my plan of action with that little Rolls Royce. And while we're on the subject of cars, here's one that I finished yesterday. A little gold Ford Cortina. Hasn't that come up nice? I've tried doing a bit of detailing on these with my silver pen, but it ain't come out that well. Uh, too much paint comes out with it. So what I need uh, what I'm going to stick to doing, I think, is using the tinner paint and a very fine paint brush. With literally just a smidge of paint on the end of it. That's all you need. Because if not, it just flows everywhere if you've got too much paint on it. Right, so the other thing I did this morning is change that light fitting. There's the old one. Um, two of the bulbs have actually blown in that one. Well, one... Two of them were okay when I first took that light down from its original location, but I had it stored at Mum's and uh, the wind blew it over. I actually had it sitting out in the garden on um, one of those portable gas heaters. And uh, <laughs> it was with a couple of other light fittings and it was a windy night that night that blew it all over and that's actually broken one of the other bulbs, it seems. So, as I had to go to Sainsbury's, I know I don't make special trips for stupid things like this. I needed to go to Sainsbury's for a few other bits of groceries, so I thought while I'm in there, I'll grab a box of these. So I've got four LED bulbs to go in there. Well, I only use three, so I've got a spare one. Um, which weren't actually a bad price, not in my opinion. You can get these as a box of two for £4, or a box of four for £7. So it's actually more expensive to buy two packs of um, two of these bulbs. So it costs you eight pounds for four that way, whereas buying a box of four costs you seven. Which I think I worked out would be... That's not even um, two pounds a bulb, is it? Which is actually quite cheap for these. Are they any good? I have absolutely no idea. I've never used Sainsbury's Home. So I'm going to do that in a little while as well. In fact, I'll get you on the tripod when we come back and uh, we'll put these in. And then, once I've got the ladder out of the way, I can just put all this pack down. Because <laughs> the ladder's pushed up against all the base plates and it's popped everything up a little bit. I couldn't do anything about that, unfortunately, because it all overhangs and I need the ladder there to reach that light fitting. I didn't quite think that through when I put that up there. Right, 
So, I'm going to crack on and I will be back in a jiffy. Right, one jiffy later, I'm back. So, I've got the bike up here, but before we get to that, I have got those up on the wall and only just managed to get that. Are you going to focus? Thank you. Just managed to get that one up before the battery went on the drill. After all these years, that battery is starting to get weak. It's not holding the charge like it used to. But it's taken... I've had it over 10 years. Anyway, here we are. I'm going to park my arse on the bed. One Rally Scorpio road racing bike. Now, I got a message from a friend of mine on Facebook who uh, is the local street cleaner, I suppose would be his job description, I'm not sure. You know, he's a dude that goes around with his little trolley and whatnot and uh, near the picks and generally just cleans up the, um, mainly around the town centre. But uh, he messaged me on Facebook yesterday morning. I woke up and found a message saying that this had been sitting on a car park just around the corner from me, literally, for the past week, unlocked, and it was sitting at the back of some parking spaces on a fence. Um, it clearly was not ridden there. We have flats of pancake, flats of pancake, and then we have this mess. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually uh, well and truly all wrapped around there. Not quite sure what happened there, but anyway. So, we've got a bit of a rise in fly tipping at the minute, which seems to be a phrase not many Americans know. Um, it seems to be quite a British phrase. Uh, fly tipping just means illegally dumping your rubbish where it's not meant to be, for example, on the side of the road, on a public area, like a little public green area or a park, or on the edge of a farmer's field, in a woods, anywhere like that where your rubbish is not meant to be, where you don't have permission to put it, I should add. It's what we call fly tipping here. I think we call it that because you tip your rubbish and you do it on the fly. You know, you just drive up somewhere, chuck it out, drive off. And I've got a feeling, and I'd be willing to bet money on it, that someone reversed into the parking space where this was found, so the back was up against the fence, waited until it was all clear and there was nobody around, hopped out, opened their boot, chucked the bike out on the fence and drove off. Which is a bit of a shame, because that is a lovely looking frame. Unfortunately, it's way too tall for me. Um, it's actually taller than my black rally, which I've forgotten what model rally that is now. <laughs> which is a shame, because I actually do like this as well. I'd have kept both. But uh, the plan for this is that I want to steal a few parts from it. Besides, this hasn't got what they call the cheetah brake levers, where you have the extra one come around here. Um, which I would have liked. And to be honest, if this had those, I would have swapped the handlebars straight over onto mine. Just taken that bit out, cleaned all this up and swapped them straight over. Um, but this hasn't, and I don't want those. I like to have both options. Um... But what I do want to pinch is the alloy brake cable and um, brake calipers rather. Swap them for the ones of my black one. Because um, I wanted to upgrade to alloy ones on my other race set anyway, and I believe they're alloy. We've got a magnet. Yep. Yep, they are alloy. Yeah. I was gonna look for a pair on eBay. No, I don't need to. I can just swap them for this one. And these wheels, I don't actually like the black wheels, alloy wheels, on my other bike. So I'm going to take those wheels off and put these ones on. Once I've uh, untangled that mess. <laughs> That's a hell of a mess. 
it also came with this rally pump. I'm actually going to use this. I know the pump works. I've already tried it, but I'm going to use this to pump these tyres up just to see if they are punctured or if they've just gone flat from being sat. My guess is this got stood up because this broke off from the bike. It looks like the bolt's missing, so maybe the bolt has come off. And that fell off. Probably got wrapped around the wheel while that was in motion. So I actually might swap the wheels if this wheel is not buckled. But I can't spin the wheel to find out yet because all of that is choking it all up. <laughs> yeah, plus I wanted tyres like this on my other bike as well. But yeah, even if I drop that seat, I'm pretty sure there's a hope in hell's chance I'm going to get on that. Um, but I don't think I'll put my black wheels in this one. Um, but this frame I will keep as a future project, perhaps to fix up after this lockdown is done. I've got a Claude Butler mountain bike to do as well. I stole the um, forks out of that. I paid 20 quid for it. It's from a lady I've bought several bikes from recently. Um, she, they, her and her partner offered me that one as it was. It needed a lot of work. So I paid 20 quid for it. And my plan was to take the forks out of that Claude Butler and put them in my grey Claude Butler, the very first one that I built four years ago because the forks were a bit too squishy for my liking, a bit too soft but it seems from being sat in the shed for so long they've stiffened up quite nicely actually so I thought well I'll just leave those in so I took the forks out and put those on my Saracen full suspension bike um, which I've got a bit of a story behind that one as well it was, actually I'll tell you that story when I've got the bike back here because I can do a video on that maybe. But yeah, to cut a long story short, I sold that particular bike to a lady I knew over 10 years ago and I'd always said, if you ever want to sell it, I'll buy it back. Um, and finally, <laughs> last year, she wanted to sell it. It was in quite a state, but she wanted to sell it, so I bought it back and I fixed it all up again. But the front forks, after all these years, were completely knackered. Um, not anymore. It's got a decent pair in there. So. I don't even know where to start with. I suppose I better start by uh, trying to get that derailleur and chain out of that mess. I think what I might do is cut the chain. But I've only got a dinky little junior hacksaw here, unfortunately. Could do with my big one. Where is it? It's in here somewhere. Shit. do love having that there for a monitor, but I always catch my arm on it, because it sticks out so far. <clears throat> so I'm actually tempted to switch it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's all I've got, so I'm going to have to just use that. Well, I can only use that, that's all I've got. All the cables are naffed on this anyway. Apart from the brakes. Brakes do work. But the other thing which pisses me off with this as well, they click, but they're all built into the frame on this one. So I can't even put those on my other bike. I like the ones that click. Never mind. These wheels are going to need a good clean as well. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause the camera again and uh, see if I can untangle this mess. Changed my mind. I guess I've got safety squints. Because I've changed my mind of what I'm going to cut that chain with as well. Because that's... I'm not even going to bother with that. I'm going to use that. That's why I've got the safety squints on. Snap that now. Oh, it's a bit toasty. 
might let me uh, Nope, that's actually pretty tough. I'm going to have to cut the other bit. Last little bit, there we go. Didn't see why I had those on. <laughs> That's why I invested in a couple of pairs. Right. So, that's actually gotten bloody wedged around that bottom bracket as well, hasn't it? Oh, that's still off. Oh, no, put it out. There we go. Right. You do tend to taste that. <laughs> That's the only downside with it. Um, tell you what, them cutting wheels for them rotary tool rotary tools are actually pretty handy. There we go. I'll pull that out of there. That's supposed to. There we go. I'm nearly there, I think. Uh, but this dragger is actually pretty well wedged. That's well wedged behind that wheel. Not at all. There we go. I'm going to take that off. Is that free? That is free. Good. Bottom bracket. That's good. For some reason, we've got a rear light bracket there. Um, I'm guessing at one point that was actually up here somewhere. <laughs> like that. It has got a front light bracket as well. Probably long gone by now. Right, should we see if we can get some air in these tyres? Well, I can remember where I put the pump. Oh, come on, it's a big long white thing. Let's get that out of the way. I should get that off. Yep. This would actually fix up into a nice bike, and there's so many things that you could do with this. You could turn it into a gravel bike, you could turn it into a fixie, you could turn it into a single speed, which is Almost the same as a fixie, but with a fixie, you don't have that freewheel motion. That's the difference. <coughs> so you can't stop pedalling. But if you do, you'll come off the bike. And that'll ruin your day. Right. Uh, I don't know where the pump is. Oh. I had it. Not so long ago. <laughs> Pump can definitely go on my other bike as well. Whoa! See the dust come out of that? So, that goes on there. <coughs> I've actually got a grey one of these frame pumps as well. Back wheel's not done up. <laughs> that might be why the dragon fell off. screw on adapters you get. I might, might uh, definitely put that on one of my other bikes. Uh, either that or I might put that on my hybrid that I use to do my groceries with. I'm pretty, I'm pretty certain that's got the same uh, press the valves on that one. Right. No air at all in that one.
quick release front wheel on this. Tires are old, but they're not in too bad condition, to be honest. Well, I'm presuming they're old because of the colour of the sidewall, but I do believe you can still get them. Get them with this um, gum wall, that's what I call them. Gum wall tires. So far, it's sitting on two pumped up wheels. Uh, what I'm going to do, it's just real on you so you can see what I'm doing. Pull the chain out of this. I'm going to go and find a 15mm spanner. Actually, you know, I think with a good soak in some diesel or something, you could actually salvage that chain. I know I've cut a link, but I've only cut one link. I can soon replace that. Also, just want to get this cable off as well. That needs to sit. There to be a bolt go through there that holds this to the frame, and that sits on like that. But the bolt is missing. Because I just want to spin that back wheel to see if it's buckled. Back in two shakes. I'll try a spanners here. So, what did I want? What, a 15, didn't I? So 16 and 17. Was that 16? No, 17. That's close. 14, 15. Still holding there. Obviously, when I do fix this up later, I will put a bolt through there. Right, now what a 9 mil. That's going to be. One of these barbell spanners. Well, be careful with these barbell spanners because you can snap the bloody things. Very good spanners, I do like using them. Well, I can find a 9mm. <laughs> Is that a 9mm? No. So, I won the 9mm then. Yep. Oop. There we go. Oh, it's got a lovely kink in it when I got stuck in the wheel so I can go in a bit. Let's wrap this bit of cable up out of the way. Or not. Right. Is the wheel buckled? Place your bets. Yep. It's the short answer to that. It's got a very nice buckle in it. I'm going to have to release that brake caliper. So the fact this wheel is buckled suggests to me that that got wrapped in there while this bike was in motion. I've got cobwebs on this as well. I've got a little eight-legged friend hiding on this. Oh my piece sake. I need something just to whack that bolt with. I don't think there's going to be enough weight with this. in there pretty well. <laughs> so, fuck it. I'm going to rebuild this in the future anyway, so I'm going to use my little dribble. Can you not see? I forgot to put my specs on. There. That's not too bad though, I can straighten that. I'm not going to worry about that one, but the front. Front's fine, so it's just the rear. Yeah, I can straighten that. Not a problem. 
Not a problem at all. Right. I might strip the other bits off later, like the uh, the two calibers. But I'll do that at Mum's, because I'll take that down to Mum's and sort that. But for now, we've got one job to do in here. And then I'm going to call up for the video, I think. Need to get some shit cleared from down here as well. Right. So. <laughs> um. Might be a bit awkward. There we go. Can you see? You can. Right. So I've got to clamber up here and change some blobs. Just turn my camera screen around so I can actually see what I'm doing. Get yeah, one. I monkey up this very precariously play that placed ladder. That's a blown one. Them screws are come loose again, but never mind. One. Two. Let's turn that one around for a minute so I can see it. I don't think that one was going to work for much longer though, look at that. It's all fogged up. Three! Right. I can't reach the switch. Oh, my head is only just on camera. <laughs> right. Let me just hop down. Preferably without breaking any more Lego. Right. Light! They're all working! So I've just got to get up there and just line them up now. So. It's not going to work on that one, is it? here. <laughs> Turn that one that way, I think. Somewhere there. I might have to play around with these two later. That one can go over to the display somewhere. Should have left those turned on, really, shouldn't I do this? That one's in the wrong place. Try to just angle these so they light up the city as much as possible. Ooh. And I'll take that ladder away and somehow try and straighten all these base plates out. That it? That's it. Right. I think that's going to be a lot better. I want to be a light for, uh, you know, as and when I need it. Right. I think I've got my plates lined back up. Ooh. It's not worth keeping that really, is it? Right. I was going to put these back in there, but then I can't put cardboard in the recycling, can I? I'll keep the LED. It's an LED very similar to this that I had that wasn't working. It ca when it first came on, it was nice and bright, but then like two seconds later, it dimmed out. So there was a fault with that somewhere. I don't even know where I got that one from, to be honest. Anyway, I'm gonna call it quits for this video. Oh, I've got a couple of cable clips to put back in there. I've just noticed. Yeah, right, so that is it for the video. Got to remember not to stand like that. That's better now you can see me. That is it for the video. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found the video interesting. And I will talk to you all in the next one. Bye.